Death for Sigmund and his brothers seems certain. But the king's wife is Sigmund's sister, and she begs for mercy and implores the king to chain them up instead. He agrees. Not for mercy, though, but because he plans an even more cruel and lingering death. Chained to a tree in the forest that night, a she wolf comes and devours one of Sigmund's brothers. She returns, ravenous, night after night until only Sigmund is left. The next day, Sigmund's sister sends a servant with honey to smear on Sigmund's face. As the she-wolf licks the sweet honey from Sigmund's face, he bites the wolf's tongue. The she-wolf pulls away, but Sigmund holds on. The chains break, and he is free. After his escape, Sigmund lives like us, hidden in the forest. His enemy, King Sigir, believing him dead.
Where's it? Find, Find it. it. There it is. Focus. 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 Use your eyes. Look. Get closer. What can you see? Go to it. It's not safe. A king in the north forced the dwarves to make a sword that would never fail and never rust, and that would slice through iron and stone and bring victory to its bearer. But the angry dwarves cursed it. It would be the death of a man every time it was drawn, and it would be the death of the king. Let me tell you about the sword Tyrving. I don't recognize this place. Where are we? Where is she? It feels wrong. Where are we now? Burial mound. It's so strange that we go to such lengths to bury death. Something so very ordinary. Inevitable. It's as if we could spoil to hide death. Because we have no answer for it. But when it comes, and it forces itself onto our friends or loved ones, then comes the reckoning. for the trials, like when we first met, remember? Just wait there. I'll find you. What's wrong with you? Can't you find him? What's happened to him? Turn back. 
She has to keep going. It's not safe here. She has to keep going. If you go down there, no one can save you. It's too scary. Senua, you remind me of a story that the Northmen tell about a young woman warrior. Her name is Herver, the daughter of a berserker born after he was killed. She's a wild, willful child who teaches herself to fight with weapons. When she learns where her father is buried, her only desire is to reclaim the treasure buried with him, but above all, the sword, Tyrving. I'm leaving. I've decided. I think it will be good for me. It's the darkness. It's speaking through. No, Dad, it's me. I think I can beat it. In my own way.
I can see the darkness in your eyes, child. I met a boy. Boy? The chief no. He said he could help me. It's a trick. He said I could be normal. Normal? Yes. No boy is going to save you. No one can. When they see the rot growing no. inside you, no. they will turn their back on you. The gods can only fix you through my hand. You're going nowhere. No. You will not defy the gods. Come, child, take my hand. Come. Send one. No! I am leaving! You cannot escape the darkness. Your curse will make everyone suffer. You will have blood on your hands! I saw once a plague strike northern lands of ice. It was so terrible that not the oldest man among us could remember the like. Hundreds died. The sickness took nearly every person younger than forty and many older. And where dying mothers gave birth, the marks of the plague were on the babes as they came out of the womb. Where are we? I don't like it. This place feels... What is this place? This place feels... It's... Creepy. Creepy. It feels wrong. It feels strange. Where is it? Where are we? Turn back. This is wrong. This has to be wrong. There he is. There Dilly. he is. The light. Go towards it. He's in the house. He's Find going it. in. He's disappearing. Follow him. Don't let him disappear. The air is it gone. Keep going. How do you find it? It's just a trial. It's just another test. You just have to solve it and then you <laughs> find it. <laughs> it's a test. Like the old warrior trials. Dillian will help me. She can almost taste it. Do you smell it? No. Don't worry. Not everyone can. It was a warm spring day when she went to the river with Dillian and the others. But the water. She could taste the rot. But no one else could. She knew something was wrong. Sinister. She begged them to leave, but they just laughed at her. But soon enough, as the bodies piled up, no one was laughing. And they knew that she was not like that.
How are you going to fix it? You can't get to the house until the bridge is fixed. You must. You have to get to the house. You have to find Dillian. Northmen speak of a death moon, a light shaped like a half moon that appears inside a house and goes around the walls. I once saw the death moon appear at a farm, and first the shepherd died, then a guest died, and then the farmhands, and then the farmer and six of his men drowned at sea. there will be death in that house.
Genoa, come to me. Where are you? I'm here. I'm right here. Are you in there? Come out if you are. Senua! What happened? They're blaming me for the plague. They say that I'm cursed. What if they're right? How would they know such a thing? Are they gods? None of us are. They're just... people. Good people, but they're scared. They're afraid of what they can't see. Like children scared of the dark. They make up stories to fill the void. It doesn't make them true. What if my father was right? You have to step out of this darkness. Let them see who you really are like I am. You're not a monster. Without you, this darkness has made me a monster. What if this is pointless? What if you're wrong? What if this has nothing to do with the sword? What if we're wrong? The sword will never be wrong. <laughs> what if this is the end? It's just a trick. It's just a pointless test. You've been fooled before. You could be fooled again. You're being tested. You don't know. It's just their game. You never know which way it's going to go. <laughs>
want to tell you a story about a god of the Northmen called Baldur, the second son of Odin. He was beautiful, good and wise. He was fair of feature, he spoke fair words, he gave fair judgments. Light shone from him. Only good things were told of him. Yet he was the first of the gods to die. Tell this story about the death of Baldur. It begins with dark dreams. Night after night, Baldur dreams of his own death, and the gods fear for his life. So Baldur's mother makes everything in the world fire, water, iron, stone, earth, wood, beasts, birds, serpents, poison, sickness. Swear an oath not to. Neither weapons nor wood will injure him, Baldur's mother boasts. Only Loki, father of Hela, the mistress of death, is not amused.
through it. It's dangerous. Follow it. What's behind the gate? Where will it take you? It's not safe. Dillian. There he is. There he is. What are you waiting for? Quick, find a way. Find him. Go for him before he disappears. Dillian, don't lose him. Where is he? Where's he gonna wait that nobody We're in the wrong world. He's not here. She's in the wrong world. He's not in this world. He's in the other one. He's in the other one. He's in the dark world. The dark. The dark world. The world once seemed so simple. Black and white. Darkness and light. Narrow dividing lines of our own making. Dillian taught her to see further, to peek through the cracks and see the worlds of color stretching away from the gloom. And Seno explored new paths into the unknown. Not in this world. You can't. The gods. Feast and rejoice, and amuse themselves by throwing spears and stones at Baldur, striking at him with sword and axe. But he comes to no harm, whatever they do. The gods never cease to wonder at this great marvel. But Loki shapes himself into a woman and asks Baldur's mother, Is it really true that all things promise to keep him safe? I did not ask the mistletoe. Baldur's mother confesses, I thought it was too young. Oh dear.
Atlas has claimed Dillian. Poor Dillian. He didn't know. He was kind. goes to the gods as they throw things at Baldur. The blind god, Huth, was there. Loki asks him why he wasn't taking pollen. Huth says, I cannot see where Baldur stands, and even if I could see him, I have no weapon. Loki replies, here is a wand, I will tell you where he stands. And Huth throws the mistletoe at Baldur. It pierces through him, and to everyone's horror, Baldur is killed. And for this, Hood is slain. The Northmen tell how the gods mourned Baldur. His body was to be burnt on his ship, but they could not manage to push it into the sea and sent for a giantess to do it. She comes riding a wolf and has vipers for her reins. She pushes Baldur's ship into the sea with such force that the ground shakes and the rollers burst into flames. When Baldur's wife sees his body carried onto the ship, her heart bursts with grief, and she dies. She's put next to her husband, and the pyre is lit, sending the dead to hell. But even so, the gods cannot accept his death. Overcome with grief, the gods send Hermod to ride to Hell and ask Hela to let Baldur return home. All the gods are weeping, he says. Are you? asks Hela. We shall see if he is truly missed. If everything in the world will weep for him, he shall go back to the gods. But if even one thing refuses, Baldur stays with me. The gods send messengers everywhere. Weep for Baldur, weep him out of hell. And everything wept. Men, beasts, earth, stone, trees, metal, everything. Except for a giantess they find in a cave. Baldur was never my friend, she says. Let hell keep what she has. The Northmen say that the giantess must have been Loki in disguise.
things that are most precious to you. You are guilty. The Northmen tell how the gods punished Loki for Baldur's death. They captured him and took him to a cave. They fetched his two sons and turned one into a wolf, and he ripped his brother apart. The gods used Loki's own son's entrails to tie him down, and turned these bonds to iron, and dangled a poisonous serpent over his face, so that its venom would drip onto him. Each time the venom drips onto Loki's face, he writhes in agony. The Northmen say that is the cause of earthquakes. A reminder, perhaps, that if even gods must accept death, then... Do you know, Lydia? Was it worth it? He must be alive and dead. He must now. He doesn't deserve to be dead. What does that make you feel? darkness never let her go, and she was caught between two worlds, that of Zinbel and her past, and Dillian, her future, two realities tearing at her soul. What if this is pointless? What are you doing? Why did you think you could make this work? You keep seeing runes, you see runes everywhere. But it doesn't mean anything. You can't read this language. You don't understand. Zinbel was right. You're wasting time. You're cursed. You will never succeed. Slow, slow. Quicker. He saw who she could be. He saw who she really was. He saw the warrior within. He cared in a way that nobody else did. He's the reason she keeps fighting. Remember the smell of his neck. 
darkness within you. Father cannot understand your darkness. He cannot see through your eyes. No one can. <laughs> My own father was born blind. He doesn't have the faintest idea of what the night looks like. <laughs> the word dark to him means as little as the word light. So someone is afraid of the dark. So we fix them by taking away their sight. You give up the beautiful world. You, and only you, can see just to be rid of your nightmares. Or is this the price you pay for the gift you have? The gift that makes you so special in my eyes. Just another part of the person I love. I left for the wilds to protect you from my darkness. Because I love you. But it made it worse. I'm so sorry. Killing you would be too easy. They're taking your memories to torture you. They're taking them from the inside. 